Mr. Secretary, I'd like to just begin with a brief additional observation on the notification issue. For past several years, this committee has worked on a bipartisan basis to establish an oversight structure for cyber operations, for terrorism operations, and for sensitive military operations. And, and an oversight structure that allows the department to have the flexibility it needs to operate in a volatile, rapidly changing world and still give us the ability to exercise our duties under the Constitution. Now, the basis for all of those in all three of those areas is that we get timely, accurate information from the department. And this failure, even if it was ordered by the White House, undermines the ability to have that sort of oversight structure. I've been a member of the Intelligence Committee for 10 years. Our work depends on getting accurate, timely information from the intelligence community. If the president can violate the law and say, no, in this case, we're not going to give you the information, it undermines the oversight process that we have with the intelligence community. So my point to you is it's not just about this incident. It's not just about somebody having their feelings hurt. This decision undermines a lot of the working relationship in all these areas of, of national security. And I think it's important that, that the whole administration understands some of the ramifications of this. Let me ask a specific question. Press reports indicate that Sergeant Bergdahl was captured by a Haqqani Network commander and was held by the Haqqani Network. Is that true? What I would prefer is, as I noted in the classified uh, session, that we get into the specifics of that 15-6 commander's evaluation report that was done on the circumstances at the time of Sergeant Bergdahl's uh, capture. I believe that was done in, in August of 2009. That's been sent up here, unredacted, sent up here yesterday. Uh, and I just as soon get into that uh, in, a, in a classified uh, well, I'm not, but I, I would say this, though. He was in that report that the Army did. He was classified as missing slash captive. Yeah. So I, I wasn't really focused was not, on not him. I'm trying to just any, to verify, as, as I understand, administration people have said clearly it was the Akani network that kept him. Well, the Akani network did have him through periods of time. Uh, this was another complication. Over a five-year period, he was moved around. Uh, we had difficulty finding him and knowing where he was. Um, different groups held him. So the, the, the complication of, uh, of, it, it, of it, it, Connie's it, being part of this, that's right. Okay. And, and it's also true that Connie Network is listed by the State Department as a foreign terrorist that's organization. That's right. Okay. That's right. Let me just turn But quickly. we didn't negotiate with... Akani. Okay. I, I think that's a subject we'll want to discuss more, uh, if we must, in the classified session. But I think who well, held Well, I, I want to make sure time. the record's clear on that. Uh, we engaged the Qataris, and they engaged the Taliban. Now, if the Akanis were subcontracting to the Taliban or whatever that relationship is, you know. There's the Pakistan Taliban and the Afghan Taliban. There's a difference there. So we get back into definitions of, of who's, who has responsibility for whom. But I, I just want to make sure that that's clear on the record, and we can go into a lot more detail. Okay. Well, I think that you just pointed out some of the difficulty in making categorical statements that we don't negotiate with terrorists when, uh, at least for some period, uh, the Connies were the ones who, who, who had him. Let me just ask about one other thing, and that is the, the five detainees that were released. Uh, you said that there is always some risk associated with, with releasing someone from Guantanamo, but you also said that they have not been implicated in any attacks on the United States. I have some unclassified summary of evidence before the combatant status review tri tribunals. For example, for Mr. Fazel, it says the detainee engaged in hostilities against the United States or its coalition partners. Maybe there's a difference between us and our partners. Uh, uh, for Mr. Wazik, it says the detainee participated in military operations against the coalition. 
so at least at some point, there was evidence that they were involved in hostilities, military operations against the coalition, weren't there? Yes, they were mid to high ranking members of the uh, Taliban uh, government, of the Taliban. So, yes, they were part of planning. But what my point was, uh, we have no direct evidence of any direct involvement uh, in their direct attacks on the United States uh, or any of our troops. They were part of the Taliban at the time. Some uh, were given to us. We picked two of them up, captured two. But, yes, they were combatants. So your point was they didn't pull the trigger, but they were senior commanders of the Taliban military who directed operations against the United States and its coalition partners. Would that's that be right. a better way to do it? That's, that's, that's right. Okay. Now, as I said in my statement, Congressman, they were combatants. They, we were at war with the Taliban. I mean, there's, there's no getting around that, and I made that point, I thought, pretty clearly. Thank you.